so I'm, I, I teach on an analytical and clinical biochemistry module level five. Um, we've got about 220 students on the, on the module. And um, we had planned some changes before COVID, but uh, COVID definitely expedited what we did. So the first thing that we did was, uh, or what I did was change the assessment pattern. This is, we went into the hybrid teaching model and I set up all my models modules to go online if required. But in this module, we had in-class activities and online. And the practicals I'm going to talk about, the students could attend in class and online. So we had both uh, um, facilities. So previously, this module, we had um, three assessments, two lab reports with a weighting of 15% each. And then at the end of the module, there was a multiple choice exam that had a weighting of 70%. I'm not that keen on multiple choice at level five and definitely not level six. And um, the COVID pandemic basically allowed me to change the assessment pattern, which then became two reports um, linked to the lab practicals. They don't do an exam. So I've broadly speaking, taken exams off my modules um, with the exception of a few multiple choice exams. So we'd been talking at Surrey with the Open University, uh, in particular, James Smith and colleagues about using the open science or open um, university practicals or some of them. And I wanted to implement this um, on this module. A very good reason for doing this is that these um, practicals um, are on chromatography, for example, and it would be very difficult to do this in a, a student lab environment. We just don't have the equipment. We don't have the space in the labs. Um, type tabling would be a, a, a nightmare, basically. And then lastly, um, it allowed us to work very constructively with um, colleagues at the Open University, and we continue working with them. Right, so I did two, the students did two reports. Um, the two reports are linked to online practicals, but not um, only online practicals. So report one, um, shown here, they uh, do a, a quantitative HPLC practical, that's um, an online open science practical, and they then link the information from that practical to lectures on drug metabolism that they get in a different module and on my module. And then secondly, because I teach chromatography, they also do a chromatography practical online, which is not open university, but I will, I will come back to that later. Right, so as I said, the, the, um, the practicals, uh, two of the practicals I'm gonna talk about are from the Open Science Laboratory at the Open University. And James Smith and his colleagues have been absolutely fantastic in helping us set this up and giving us access and testing and everything. So I'm gonna just go through what we did and why we did it, etc. So the first practical is a quantitative HPLC practical and it measures two uh, metabolites, drug metabolites. Um, this is the welcome page. Um, for the uh, practical. And I'll just say this, that this practical integrates smoothly with our uh, virtual learning environment. So, um, you know, absolutely fantastic what they provided with us. So we got a welcome page that was provided by the Open University. Then there's a tutorial. Um, this tutorial was formative. We actually found that very stu few students did this kind of understandably. And then lastly, we've got the actual experiment. So I gave them some fairly good instructions. Well, I hope I did, um, and advice. So this is the experiment that they do. It's essentially in three phases. Um, they do a standard curve with the parent drug, nortriptyline. Um, 
the standard curve runs from zero to 100 nanomole, nanomoles per liter. They can decide which points they want to do, how many points we can give advice. It's up to the students to decide the endpoints. And then there's a second standard curve, which is the metabolite hydroxynortriptyline, again, standard curve. Now, with both of these uh, metabolites, um, they get a chromatogram and they then have to integrate that chromatogram using these two slide arrows or triangles, whatever you want to call them. So every student gets slightly different data because of this integration. The second good thing about this is that they also get, in, in addition to the elution time, they get a mass spec spectrum and they have to identify and use that mass spec spectrum later to identify the drug and the metabolite in their sample. So they do these standard curves first, and um, this is the, the mass spec spectrum. This is what they get uh, theoretically coming off the column. And this is the library. They then have to identify which compound it is. I mean, they know what it is because it's a standard curve, but it sets them up for the third part of the um, practical. So in the third part, they now have four um, patient groups, A to D, and they've got three patients in each group, and they then have to do a um, chromatographic run of those uh, patient samples, and they identify um, the, the drug. In this case, this is the parent drug, this is the metabolite, and they then have to use their standard curves to convert the, um, uh, the values that they get from this run and convert it into concentration. So there's a, there's a link there between standard curves and the patient samples. The four patient groups are um, different types of metabolizer phenotypes. So this links in really well with uh, drug metabolism and pharmacology lectures. So they have to bring that kind of information into um, this practical and the report. So that's the first part. Oh yeah, then the, this is just the kind of data that they get. Um, I show them this slide in my pre-practical and I quite clearly tell them this is fake data because previously I've had students copy my data into their reports. Um, so I give them the wrong data, so they can't do it. And um, they then in their reports link the ratios of the two metabolites and link that information to um, the genotypes and phenotypes. So that's that practical. Um, then linked to that practical, I, I have a second chromatography um, part in the report, and this is on protein chromatography. And here I in particular use an elevator pitch approach. And um, initially when I mentioned elevator pitch, there was just a massive panic in the class. So what I did was I used um, tutorials each week to develop that that elevator pitch and what was expected. So the things that I did was I, I gave them this as a starting point in their report. I've decided to do a method to purify protein X and I'll come back to that protein X in a bit. So the, the advice was that they need to talk about how, why, what, so what, and they've got 200 words to do that. Um, the reason I said 200 words is elevator pitch is about three minutes. So they, they had to think a little bit laterally in some ways in doing this. They were allowed to put in diagrams. So that, that was in addition to the word count. So to do this protein chromatography, I, I used this Agbooth app. It's an absolutely amazing app. Um, it does just about anything I would want to do in a practical, and it's completely free, you know, which in this day and age is, is quite uh, a novelty. So you do this, uh, there are a number of different options. You can use um, different protein mixtures. I'm just going to give you one example. So here, 
what we did in one tutorial, myself and the students, um, we started with the default mixture and we decided to uh, identify or purify protein eight. Um, this is the information that's given, stability, pH, temperature, et cetera, what the starting points are, enrichment, you know, the standard kind of protein purification. Here we've got a two-dimensional gel, um, two, 2D page, and there again, I could explain to them what a 2D page is. And to identify our protein of interest, we actually use an immunoblot, and that was protein eight in the circle there. That was identified from the immunoblot. And the students could then self-select a protein and do their elevator pitch on that. So there's quite a lot of options in doing this protein purification. And this is a slide of a purification I tried, and I talked through with the students. So what we did is we identified protein eight for the next tutorial and the whole class or the whole tutorial group then did that protein and I did it as well. Um, here on the left, we got a chromatogram. Um, I explained to them why I used q -sephirose. And again, this information is provided on the app and then they can read further or come to the tutorial with questions. So this is the chromatogram with the salt gradient. q is an ionic anion exchange, just for those that do protein chromatography. And then you can pull certain fractions shown in red here. And here we've got the purification table. And here we've got the uh, purity of the sample after that chromatography step there. So you can see there's quite a lot of, um, a long way to go. And generally speaking, the, the students needed at least two steps to purify their protein, which is quite good because they then have to explain why they did what they did and how they did it. And I'm gonna be quite honest, some of the proteins I couldn't purify and the students did, you know? So they came up with some really um, good thinking that was different to mine. I'm a little bit set in my ways and, um, use a very chromatographic approach. They used um, heat treatment, things like that, because they, they're not qu quite as um, set in their ways as I am. So the other thing that we did was if they could not purify the protein, we also talked about how they could relate that in their elevator pitch, as in going to the boss or getting further information, going back to the company, et cetera, et cetera. So um, for this elevator pitch, uh, some of the students actually got 100% because they were absolutely brilliant. Um, the students that didn't engage with the tutorials, they really struggled. But that in some ways differentiates the students. So for this report one, I, um, I do things slightly differently. I always give students a pro forma and the reason I give them a performer is to indicate what the expectations are and also make marking easier. So, um, you know, then we can mark by section, for example. Right, so that was report one. Um, this, these are the, the marks that they got. Um, previously, we'd had a bit of a concern with high marks on practical reports. In this one, the average, the median mark was 61%, which is probably a little bit lower than I would want. Um, I'm, I, I like 65 as my number, but you know, it is what it is. And as you can see here, uh, somebody got an 86% and that was absolutely brilliant. And then there were a few that struggled down here. Once they got these reports, they could then come for one-to-one -one feedback to help them with the second report, which was uh, the submission date was after uh, the feedback. So that was report one. Um, in report two, they did two different topics. One was clinical biochemistry. I gave them some patient data, a pseudo patient data, and then they did um, a creatinine clearance practical, which is also on the open science um, 
from the open science labs. So in terms of the clinical biochemistry, they get lectures on clinical biochemistry. Um, in this module, they get lectures on metabolism in semester one. And they then get this kind of data here, and they've got to use this data to identify what the physiological slash biochemical uh, condition is. They're not um, medical students, so the, it's not about treatment. It's about identifying what the condition is and then justifying that with their what I call a narrative. And they also get these patient notes, which kind of indicate to them, if they're a little bit clever and have listened, um, what the condition is. So for example, in this one here, polyurea, polydipsia means frequent urination and uh, drinking. So classic uh, diabetes. And then they have to differentiate type one versus type two, for example. So those are the clinical biochemistry. They get three patient samples. They have to write those up. In terms of the actual online practical, this is the second practical we got from the Open University. This is on creatinine clearance. Again, seamless integration with our VLE. There are four parts to this practical. Parts A and B are two different videos that explain the physiology you know, not in depth, but enough so that the students know what's going on. Then in part C, they do an age-related experiment, and in part D, it's different health conditions. So this is what the practical looks like um, when they go on screen. This is the age-related practical. They get ages going from 20 years of age to 80 years of age. And then they have to do an analysis on the effect of age on creatinine clearance. So um, that's the age effect. Uh, and then the second part is um, health conditions. And there's different types of health conditions here. We did a little add on to this one. Um, we added a control group. So what we did here was we added a control group, which was the 50 year age group from the previous experiment. And we use 50 years of age as that's kind of when diabetes, hypercholesteremia, et cetera, set in usually or, or the start of that. Um, here again, they get three patients and they have to do all three patients and then um, plot their results. So, they had to talk about, uh, in their report, they had to talk about, in this part of the report, uh, the effect of age. They had to do a statistical analysis. Um, they struggled a little bit with one way or another um, and why you do it and all that kind of stuff. Then they did the um, health conditions and they had to focus for part of the report on one of the health conditions that was affected. So, um, for example, in this example here, um, diabetes is affected. Um, I'm not asthma definitely isn't affected. The interesting part for us, um, and this was following on from a student question, was the effect of smoking, which was worse than an 80 year old patient. You know, so um, I think a lot of them stopped smoking after that. Right. Um, Report two is currently being marked. So that's at the end of the semester and it was submitted before um, the exam started. So I timetabled everything along those lines uh, with them getting report one back before they had to submit report two, um, et cetera, et cetera. Right, so um, just in summary quickly, the, the, the practicals provided by the Open University and Booth are absolutely amazing. Um, and, uh, you know, I couldn't ask for more in terms of integration with the VLE, the use of them, et cetera. Um, I've put authentic in inverted commas because it's not entirely an authentic assessment, but I think it's more of an authentic assessment than we previously had. And then, yeah, I've already mentioned the virtual learning environment. So where are we going next? 
we're going to tweak them a little bit. Um, I think be more explicit about the control group, for example, in the creatinine clearance. But the, the, the big thing that we're going to do next is actually plan a pedagogic study. So we're going to work with the Open University. They've got a different age group or student cohort, see how students use this, how they feel about this, um, et cetera, et cetera. One thing I've learned about pedagogic projects, they all sound good, but they all need planning because you need to do that before you even start anywhere. Right, so um, that's my wisdom for today. Um, thank you very much for listening. I'm open to suggestions, questions, comments, your wisdom. Thank you. Thanks, Alfred. That was a really interesting talk. Um, We've had a, a question in the chat from David. He said, uh, how did you find getting them using the app? In my experience with the app, we have had to spend time getting used to selecting peaks. Secondly, there was a tendency to run iron exchange repeatedly until I banned using the same, I think he said, me, sorry, I think until I banned using the same method twice. Um, I, um, I, what, what I did was I, I gave them quite an extensive pre-practical. The advice that is provided by the Open University is quite extensive as well. Um, I linked it directly with the lectures I've done. And um, because we now, we were out of lockdown, we could have in-class practicals, so they could come to an, an IT lab and we could sit down with them and do it. So the ones that wanted to engage they struggled a little bit i think they struggled more with the statistics than they did with the actual chromatography they really struggled with the statistics even though they'd done a two-way anovane report one they struggled with the one-way anovane report two so um yeah so that it was the statistics that we really had to work on um in terms of the report does that answer your question david Thank you. That actually uh, leads on to quite nicely to the question I was going to ask in terms of the feedback you gave them on report one. Were they able to use and apply that into the second report? Did they have enough time to do that? Did you see any sort of changes in the way that they approached using these apps as a, as a result? Um, well, we are, we are we're in the progress, process of marking report two, so we don't really know if it's had a beneficial effect. Um, what I did find with report one, so I did I did a one-to-one um, -one sessions, um, and what I did find was a lot of, because we're marking in different sections, the students can see where they did well and didn't do so well. And the sections they didn't do so well, they would come to the one-to-one -one and very much focus on those sections. I was positively impressed by the students not coming and asking for a change in marks. They were asking for advice on how to improve report two. So, you know, and the one to one sessions um, was a little bit tight, but uh, they were finished on the Friday and the report two was submitted Tuesday the next week. And they could ask for a one week extension. So I, I hope that we'll see. I hope it worked. Yeah, we'll find out. Yeah. Uh, question from Noel is, how do you find running an assessment that explicitly uses knowledge from another module? Um, uh, it, to be quite honest, they didn't. It, I, I In the HPLC practical, I did give them some lectures on drug metabolism, but I did find in the reports they linked to another module. Um, so that came more from the students than from me. Um, the reason I did drug metabolism lectures is because previously I've had students complain that they didn't know where to find the information. And so that I knew what the information was that they were given, I gave them those lectures. Um, but uh, not, not, but I could definitely read that they'd gone to other lectures. Uh, and other modules, and that enhanced their um, their marks, you know, critical thinking. It's the way I see it. 
No, it's nice. It's nice to see them applying knowledge across across modules. Um, you, you said you're in collaboration with Open University for this. Yeah. Uh, was there a cost associated with using these resources? There is, case? yes. Um, uh, there is a cost associated. Um, I don't think anybody from the Open University is online, but it, it, I, I'm going to be quite honest. I don't think it's excessive at all. Um, uh, compared to, am I allowed to mention a number? I can always edit it out if they don't. Okay, I, I'm just going to say it's eight with three zeros per year uh, for 240 students. Um, David, you're falling over, but um, I was given that similar a quote of 10,000 for peer review software. Um, that didn't have this kind of support. So it's it's kind of, it works both ways. Um, I would say that uh, the ACT booth, you know, we should really pay them and they should charge us. That's something I need to work on with my head of department. So there's a comment, it's not incomparable to Labster. Yeah, um, I looked at Labster, um, and a few other options. This one fitted my remit, to be quite honest. And then nice people at the Open University, so. We, we looked at the Open University as well. It's just for our students being foundation, it was a little bit higher level than what we-, we Oh, needed. absolutely, yeah. yeah. So. We have some of the practicals on our foundation year, um, but we teach chemistry, uh, kinetics and thermodynamics. So that was a different practical. Yeah. There is another practical at the Open University that's on gas chromatography and toxins in uh, aquatic environments. I think that one's fantastic for biology students. I think it's about finding the right resources that fit the Absolutely. model that you want to use. And there's so many out there that you yeah. know, they can choose what you want. And it comes down to how much they cost, what people are prepared to pay, which ones they're prepared to, to integrate. So. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Alfred. Really enjoyed that. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. And I, I, Thanks for the opportunity.